Hello everyone. This is probably my favorite video to do every single year. So um, in this video, I'm going to be going through what I'm planning to read in 2021. And it's based on some of my very favorite booktubers. So what I do end of December, early January is essentially watch all of the favorites videos. Many, many booktubers will do their, you know, top 10 favorite books of the previous year. And so I watch those. I scour my shelves to see if I have any of those already existing on my shelves. And then I put them on a separate shelf and I try to read those throughout the year. Do I get through all of them? No, I don't. But I usually get through a chunk. And I think that is why I had the best reading year of my life last year is because I did this very thing. Now, <clears throat> before we dive in, I do want to mention that I couldn't include all of my favorites, like um, Leanne from Literary Diversions, um, Victoria from what Victoria read, their books, I, I just, I didn't have them on my shelf. So not everyone is included. Ah, life. But that's okay. Let's just dive right in. The first book was a favorite from Lauren from Lauren and the Books. Uh, you will see lots and lots from Lauren on here. Um, and this is Skincare by Carolyn Hirons. I have followed Carolyn Hirons. Here she is here. She's a British um, blogger. She also has a YouTube channel, but she's more well known for her blog. And she is like a skincare guru. I've followed her for a while. Um, and I have started reading this book. I think I am yeah, 130-ish pages in. It's very good. It really is about skincare and how to take care of your skin. I have started following some of her um, routines, like morning and nighttime routine. Wow, my skin is so much better already. Um, and I have, uh, as I'm getting older, it's getting better and better. I used to have a lot of hormonal breakouts and stuff, and I still have those, but it's not nearly as bad as it used to be. But this is just making it better. So go, Carolyn, and thank you, Lauren, for encouraging me to uh, to read it. So that is the first one. It's also really quite beautiful. Um, it's bright, and it's very informational about everything that you need to do. Like, if you're on an airplane, here's how to take care of your skin. She just solves all of the problems you could ever have. So very excited to finish that. The next book is something I've had on my shelves for a while now, and this was a favorite of Sophia Reads. This is Know My Name by Chanel Miller. This is nonfiction about Chanel Miller, who was raped by Brock Turner, uh, who Brock Turner barely barely was uh, punished for this heinous, heinous act. And this is her story about her experience. And I've heard that this will empower you in a lot of ways. I'm so um, eager to read this story. So this was a favorite of Sophia's. And I'll definitely be getting to that sooner than later. Oh, I did want to mention one thing. I have included mostly YouTubers. There is one person who I adore who is not a YouTuber. She is a Instagrammer. She also has a blog. Her name is Abby by Crime by the Book. Um, oh my goodness, go and follow her on all of the things. I love her. I talk about her all the time on my channel. And she, uh, you know, I bought quite a few books and read quite a few books because of her. So this next one is The Nothing Man. How many times have you seen this one on my channel? Um, so Abby loved this book. It was one of her favorites of 2020. And this is a book about a serial killer. We follow one of his victims who lived and she writes this story about her experience. He's never been caught. And so you read her experience, it's like a book within a book. And then you watch the serial killer go to the bookstore and pick up that book. And it's basically like, what would happen if a serial killer picked up a book about himself and had never been caught and tried to bring you down? 
meant to be a really good thriller. I love Katherine Ryan Howard, you guys know. So that is something I'm very eager to get to. Next is another book that Sophia loves from Sophia Reads. This is Bear Town by Frederick Buckman. Um, this is about a hockey town and a girl is raped by, I think like the captain or like one of the main um, hockey players. And it literally divides the town. Some people want her to forget about it or don't believe her. Other people are very furious with this young man. And it's about what happens to the town after this rape occurs. This next one is Mexican Gothic, uh, which I am so looking forward to. I'm looking forward to all of these, obviously. But this was a favorite of Jordaline Reads, or Jordaline. I, I always worry that I'm saying her name wrong. I usually say Jordaline Reads. And also Katie over at Chapter Stacks. They both loved this book. And this is about... A woman in the 1950s who gets a letter from her cousin who's recently married someone and lives in this enormous beautiful mansion in Mexico she gets a letter and the letter is this is not good this is not working out come and get me and so she goes and it turns out to be a very creepy house with lots of creepy things going on in it brilliant I'm so excited for that one the next one is a book I've already read. Like I get on this early. The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. I adored this. This was a favorite of like, just wait a second, because this is a long list. Noelle Gallagher, Ashley from The Bookish Realm, Lauren and the Books, Simon of Savage Reads, Jen Campbell, and then Left on Red. It was amazing about two sisters, they're twins very light-skinned. They live in a town where light-skinned um, black people are basically the only people in the town and they escape. They run away um, but they do separate from each other and go on to lead very different lives. One of them marries a black man and has a, a dark-skinned black man I should say and has a dark-skinned child. The other passes as white. It was unbelievable. I'm so glad this is the reason that I do this video and then I make these like a priority for my TBR because holy man. So the next one is The Bass Rock. This was a favorite of Lauren from Lauren in the Book, Simon of Savage Reads, and Jen Campbell. So three of my very favorite booktubers. So The Bass Rock follows three women um, in three different time periods. We follow Sarah who's being accused of of a witch and is fleeing for her life. We follow Ruth who is living just after World War II and she's you know moving into a new home and really struggling with her marriage and this new community. And then we follow Viv who is mourning the death of her family, goes to this home where Ruth actually lived and is going through the belongings. It's meant to be absolutely brilliant. I'm very very eager to pick this one up. And this would be my first Evie Wilds. Next is a book that Left on Red absolutely adored, which is Cast by Isabel Wilkinson. This is the origins of our discontents. And this is about how there is a caste system within America. It's just nobody talks about it until she created a whole book about it. Um, but this really explores racism and how how systems and governments and all of these things can keep some people down and lift other people up in a society. I'm gonna get my highlighter out for this one. It's gonna be very eye-opening, I think, for me. And here is a book that was on my um, list last year. I never got to it. It was a favorite of Emma from Drinking By Myself. And this year it's on the list again because of Grace from GK Reads. This is three women. This is nonfiction about, I think, like the sexual lives of three women. Um, and apparently it reads like fiction. It's, it's a strange concept. And so I think I wouldn't usually pick something like this up. But I mean, it's landed on this list twice. Maybe I should just start listening to people and pick this up. Okay, moving right along, 
we've got my February book club pick for Patreon. If you don't know, I have a Patreon page. And for February, we are reading together Misery by Stephen King. So this was Noelle Gallagher's favorite or one of her favorites of last year. I think this is her favorite Stephen King and I can't wait. I've watched the movie of this like a million years ago now. I can't wait to get into it. This is about an author who um, is a very prolific author. Uh, he gets into a car accident and he's saved by a woman named Annie. Um, unfortunately, Annie is like his biggest fan and wants him to write another book for her in a certain way. And she will stop at nothing to make that happen. And she like tortures him. It sounds like a lot of fun. I will say I have already DNF'd this book, but I'm going to talk about it because it was on the list. It was on the shelf. It's important to discuss. So Lovely War was on the list. This was Ashley over at the Bookish Realms um, favorite. It's one of her favorites from 2020. And this is a YA romance book, which is narrated by Aphrodite or Venus, the goddess of love. And she tells these stories of love in World War One and World War Two. I was listening to this on audio. I didn't care about any of the characters. Now, I, I just, I need to preface this with I don't love romance books. I just thought, well, if you stick it in a World War One or Two story, maybe I'll love it. So I picked it up quite a while ago. And yeah, I have no heart. Ashley has a heart. I, I don't, but I, I'm going to pass that along to someone else who, who has a bigger heart than me. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Okay, the next book is another Noelle Gallagher favorite. This is The Shining by Stephen King. Classic Stephen King about a, a family who moved to a hotel, the Overlook Hotel, during the winter to take care of the hotel, essentially. Unfortunately, the hotel is haunted, just evil, and you watch... Jack Torrance basically work his way into madness. I watched the movie a, a, quite a few times, but I also know that Stephen King hated the movie. So I'm eager to read this and see the differences. And yeah, I can't wait to read that. The next one is another book that Abby from Crime by the Books absolutely loved. And that is The Silence of the White City. This is a detective story. This is the beginning of a detective story in which a town is being completely terrorized by a madman who is killing people off and posing them in very weird ways. And this series of crimes is very reminiscent to a series of crimes that happened 20 years before. That person went to jail. Couldn't be the same person, right? Is it a copycat? Did they get the wrong guy 20 years ago? It sounds wonderful and she loved it and so I'm going to read that in 2021. Another book that Abby from Crime by the Book adored is The Gilded Cage by Camilla Lackberg. I've never read her before. She um, has a series, like a detective series that's quite famous. Um, but this is a standalone thriller uh, about a woman who seems to have it all, like is very wealthy, lives in this gorgeous, ultra swanky apartment in Stockholm. She now finds herself at a police station and you find out why. And it sounds like there's an issue in their marriage. It does sound like a lot of fun. It will be good to like dive into some thriller authors that I haven't read yet to see if I'll like them. So I put that on the list. And then I was kind of surprised by this one. I don't know why, but Katie over at Chapter Stacks absolutely a lo loved What Alice Forgot by Leanne Moriarty. Um, so this is about... A woman who is at the gym, I think she's running on a treadmill or something, and she has an accident. She falls, bumps her head, 
and loses her memory. When she wakes up, she thinks that she's like 29, but in fact, she's 39. And in those 10 years, she's like gotten a divorce, has multiple children. Just life is very different. And she's trying to figure out what in the world happened in those 10 years and piece those that time together and maybe try to fix her life. I've heard very good things about this. I don't know why I haven't picked it up yet. So Katie, I will do it this year. Next is only book on here from Reagan over at um, Peru's Project. She reads a lot of fantasy and I don't, but I love her videos so much. I do have one fantasy book that she loved on my shelves, which I bought because of her. And it's The Poppy War. This is about a, a young woman who ends up going into the army. She is at this military school for the first half of it. And you follow her learning um, how to fight. And then the second half of the book, she's actually at war. And I think this is the first in a series of three books. I don't know if it will continue. I don't know if it's a trilogy or if it will be longer. But if I like this, then I'll have quite a few other books to get to. So I'm trying to expand my horizons. Put on some fantasy on this list. Here we go. Um, next is another book that Lauren from Lauren and the Books loved. This is Grown Ups by Marianne Keys. This is about a very like easy to read book I think about um, a family that's very dysfunctional. Now they're all getting together and one of the brothers in here his wife hit her head and she has lost any inhibitions like she will say anything and she knows a lot of secrets about the family so I think this get together happens and a lot of stuff comes out and it's meant to be hilarious. And I, I think this will be really nice for a stressful time or just when you need something easy. Looking forward to that. The next book was adored by many, many people. Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Evaristo. So this was loved by Lauren from Lauren and the Books, Jen Campbell, and then Grace over at GK Reads. I bought this probably six months ago and it's just sat on my shelves and I don't know why because it's meant to be amazing. This follows several different black women living in London, I believe. And uh, it's almost like, I think, interconnected short stories. There are a lot of perspectives in here and they all link together. I cannot wait to read this. I don't really know much more about it than that. I'm going to trust all of those wonderful people and just dive in. So there's that one. Another book from Lauren and the Books who adored um, The Pull of the Stars, which is, might be the most beautiful book I own, maybe. Rivaling things in jars. Anyway, this is about the Spanish flu and we follow a nurse. She works on a maternity ward and she is taking care of pregnant women who have the Spanish flu and are about to give birth to their babies. And um, apparently it's quite heartbreaking. Like not everyone survives, including I think the baby. So that's going to be hard and probably why I've put it off all of this time. I hope that I love it as much as Lauren did. Next is another book that Jalen from A Bar and a Bookcase loved, which is Luster. I was actually surprised that this wasn't on more people's favorites of 2020. Uh, I am wondering if this has only come out in the UK recently though, because this came out I think in September in the States and, and Canada. So Lester follows a black woman living, I don't remember, in New Jersey. And she's in kind of flex. She's, she's in her 20s. Um, and she meets a man at her work. And they start this sexual relationship. And he asks her to move in with him and his wife and his daughter. And it's about that relationship. 
the relationship that she builds with those um the the wife and also the daughter I don't even know what to make of this I've heard it compared to Queenie I don't know if that's a fair comparison but Jalen really loved it and I really loved Jalen so I put that on the list as well and then I think this is probably the last book maybe not that Abby from Crime by the Book adored that I put on the list also the start in the series this is Death in the Family by Tessa Wiggers. Now the second in the series is already out. And this follows a detective who is trying to find a missing person. This very wealthy family own an island. They're that wealthy. And they have called the police because um, one of the sons, I think, has gone missing and they can't find him, but his bed is filled with blood. So what happened to this guy so they go this detective goes to the island and i think they're stuck there there's a storm or something so it's like a locked room mystery thing sounds like so much fun lots of thrillers on the list and i am not complaining about that the next book is another favorite of Ashley's at the Bookish Realm this is White Rage The Unspoken Truth of a Racial Divide and this is really about exactly that white rage in america um and it doesn't only exist in america lord knows it exists in canada and the uk and all over the world and it is about how white people have created a system that keeps black people and people of color down and white people up and I want to learn more um, about this. I, I just think it's going to be really, really good. I'm very eager to pick this one up. There's actually quite a few on this list that were on my Amazon wish list, and, and some of you guys got them for me. So thank you so much. Like this one, White Rage. Um, Saliha got this for me. Anyway, I just wanted to mention that that means so much to me. The next book has been on my shelves forever and I know that I'm gonna love it and I'm so glad that Grace from GK Reads you know fell in love with it too in 2020 so I could put it on this list and this is Stay With Me. Um, this is about a woman living in Nigeria I want to say it's Nigeria and I could be wrong. She lives in Nigeria with her husband. They've been trying for a baby for quite a while and it's not working. And it's very emotional. In Nigeria, there is a tradition of taking on several wives. And they have, as a couple, have decided not to do that. But his parents get involved and pressure him to take a second wife. And he does. And it goes from there. Apparently, it's very twisty-turny. Like, incredibly twisty-turny. And it's a small little book, like 200 pages. Why haven't I read it yet? I will read it this year. I think the last two books are favorites from Joralene Reads. This next one is The Hunting Party by Lucy Foley. This is a locked room mystery and about uh, a group of friends. I think they went to university together. They get together for New Year's Eve in the Scottish wilderness. They like rent this beautiful home they get together unfortunately people start dying one of these friends is a murderer and one won't make it out alive it sounds like a lot of fun and Jordaline loved it last but not least is another book that Jordaline absolutely loved which is Helter Skelter the true story of the Manson murders this is like a classic true crime book it really dives into what happened with Charles Manson and his his group like family cult family um it's meant to be absolutely wonderful and this is written by the actual prosecutor in that case sounds wonderful in a dark and creepy way i actually think it's going to be really hard to read so i'm a bit nervous to read it but also looking forward to it what, what does this say about me as a human being? I don't know. It's me from the future. <laughs> Just ducking in again because I have two updates. The first is Lauren Wade, who was one of my favorite booktubers. She just uploaded today, this afternoon, 
she uploaded it to her favorite books from 2020 and I have books there to share. I also have a book that I bought that were favorites. So that I just, just tacking this on to the end. So let's talk about Lauren Wade's favorites. So I'll also be adding her to the list of people who loved Girl, Woman, Other, and then as well as The Bass Rock. And then she also adored It's Not About the Burqa, which I'm really eager to read. Um, this is about uh, Muslim women and the prejudice that they've faced. You know, there's often this idea that they're all terrorists or they're all completely submissive. And, and it's about the 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 pain of of dealing with people who are prejudiced and not educated so that was a favorite of lauren wade's so i'll be reading that and then i got a package in the mail this afternoon which contains a book that i wasn't supposed to buy any books for this video but i could not help myself. It came up again and again. Um, Jen Campbell loved it. Um, Ashley over at the Bookish Realm loved it. And then also Jalen from a bar and bookcase. So I thought I'd do a little unboxing on here. Oh, I thought I'd do a little failed unboxing on here. Seriously, this is impossible to open. What is happening? I ordered it in the dream house. So in the dream house is a memoir. Um, about a woman who is in a relationship with another woman, but it is a uh, an abusive relationship, and it's about her um, experience. It's, it, it's meant to be very, you know, the way that she structures this is different. Um, and I've heard just wonderful things about this and about how often in lesbian relationships, it can be viewed as this idyllic thing, but she obviously, people are people and people have flaws and faults. And um, this is her experience being in, unfortunately, an abusive relationship with a woman. It's meant to be amazing. And all of those people, you know, hyped it up so much. I, I had to buy it. I just had to. So, okay, now those are all of the books that are on my list that I need to read for 2021. Let me know in the comments below what you're reading in 2021. Do you do a similar thing where you go to your favorites, whether it's Bookstagram or Booktube and see what their favorites were from 2020 and then add those to your list for the upcoming year? How do you, how do you create your TBR? I would love to know. Uh, and I'll chat with you soon. Bye guys.